EBEX is a balloon-borne telescope. It's designed to make baby pictures of the universe. So what does that mean? Um, it means that there's a light that was emitted when the universe was very, very young, um, before the formation of galaxies and clusters and stars and planets. And that light carries the imprint. It's like a photograph of what the universe looked like um, when it was 380,000 years old. It also carries an imprint potentially of what the universe was like when it was much, much less than one second old. You're pushing clockwise. We're now up here at my Nevis lab integrating our EBEX experiments. Here we're working with my team to integrate this piece of the experiment to get it ready to go down to Texas where we will combine um, our piece of the experiment with the pieces of the experiment that other institutions have built. Here at Columbia we, we are developing the, the gondola which is the, sort of essentially the vehicle that will, will carry the whole thing in space. So we have you know, the telescope, the frames, and in particular we are developing the whole control and pointing system. The light will come in from the sky, just like a telescope that you would think of, an optical telescope. It hits that first big mirror, then it hits the second mirror, and then it comes and is directed into the space that's now occupied by this barbell looking thing. And that is actually just a weight. That's, that is a weight that is now um, in place of the camera. There's going to be a very large camera that holds um, cryogenically cooled detectors. And they're cooled down to very, very low temperatures to reduce the intrinsic noise so that the very, very faint signal from the sky is the thing that we see instead of noise coming from our detectors. We're responsible for the hardware and software to make the gondola move the way it should in flight. And then an even major step afterwards is also we have a bunch of sensors mounted all over the gondola, star cameras, fiber optic gyroscopes, magnetometer, and so on. And all these instruments not only help us during the flight, but afterwards they tell us where we were looking in the sky. You're hanging from a string at 40 kilometers above the Earth. And you don't, you don't have anything to push against, and you don't have anything to give you a reference frame, you know? I say, oh, I want to look in that direction of the sky. How do I know which, I'm, which way I'm pointing? And so there is a whole system that we develop, you know, that allows it to do this. Let's say the balloon or the string that's, that it's hanging from, for some reason, is rotating. The gondola needs to be able to do whatever it needs to do not to rotate. So. We have this wheel that spins, and it spins in the opposite direction that we want the gondola to move. So if I push it, what you'll see is the wheel will pick up speed in order to counteract the movement that I give it. And then it puts, puts the gondola back into the position it was. It's telling me which way that is moving. Now we were originally pointing around 256 degrees, now we are at 248, and so on. This is a lot like what sailors did. Sailors would look up at the sky, see the stars, and say, oh yeah, that's the Big Dipper, so we're going in this direction. This one's uh, a little better. It identifies the stars in about one second, and it knows where it's pointing to the tiniest fraction of a degree. That's hard to even describe. The goal of this experiment is to try to understand how the universe started, but also in the same vein to try to understand the fundamental nature of space-time. What is space made of and what is our four-dimensional space-time embedded in? Is it a larger dimensional space-time or what is it? That's what we're really trying to get at.